Hi, I'm David Thomas, Executive Director of the Milo Space Science Institute. It is my sincere pleasure to introduce Dr. Leslie Wickman, a research scientist, engineering consultant, author, and speaker. Dr. Wickman is a faculty member and special advisor to the president at Azusa Pacific University in Los Angeles. She's also director of the nonprofit Starry Nights Incorporated and was previously executive director of the American Scientific Affiliation. Dr. Wickman is author of the book, God of the Big Bang, How Modern Science Affirms the Creator. She has a master's degree in aeronautical and astronautical engineering and a doctoral degree in human factors and biomechanics from Stanford. For over a decade, Dr. Wickman was an engineer for Lockheed Martin, working on NASA's Hubble Space Telescope and International Space Station programs. She was also Lockheed's corporate astronaut. Dr. Wickman, we are very grateful you have joined us for a conversation on faith and space exploration. Thank you. Hi, it's great to be with you here today, and I'm excited about the opportunity to share my journey in science and faith. For me, it started out with my dad's backyard telescope. He would take us outside on clear starry nights to look at the stars and the moon and the planets. And I have very fond memories of those experiences. And, you know, growing up in a Christian home, it was always with the understanding that God was the source of all this wonder that we were observing in his creation. But I went to secular schools all the way from grade school through grad school. And I heard over and over again in my science classes that you might as well just leave your faith at the door because what we're going to be talking about in science will almost certainly contradict what you've heard at church. Uh, for me, I, even as a little kid, that didn't make sense. I thought, you know, how can the truth about God's creation contradict who God is as a creator? It just didn't make sense to me. So that me set me on a path at a pretty young age to try to figure out how science and faith really fit together. So I went to uh, grad school uh, at Stanford and got my master's in aeroastroengineering, got my PhD in human factors and biomechanics. I did research at NASA Ames on spacesuit design and I worked at Lockheed on the Hubble Space Telescope and the International Space Station programs. I also went through astronaut training while I was there. So I had a lot of really neat opportunities. Uh, more recently, I've been teaching at Azusa Pacific University and uh, at one point when I was teaching astronomy, I was asked to speak with some media outlets about uh, possible evidence for gravity waves that Einstein had predicted and uh, ended up writing this op-ed article for CNN's website that went viral, which then led to a book contract to talk more about how science and faith fit together. And so since those experiences, I've had lots of opportunities to speak to various audiences across the country and even around the world on how science and faith fit together. And probably not surprisingly, uh, many people seem to think that at first glance, science and faith are at odds with each other. But my perspective is similar to Francis Bacon and Galileo who talked about God revealing himself in two books on the one hand scripture and on the other hand, his creation or nature. And our jo job as humans is to figure out how those two books of God's revelation fit together. And in my view, the more you study these two books, uh, the more you see how they actually fit together and there's no conflict. Uh, and so I'm looking forward to more conversations with you uh, and thanks for listening. Our next speaker is Paul Gabor, PhD, and he has worked in particle physics. He then joined the Jesuits, studied philosophy in Krakow, Poland, theology in Paris, France, and obtained his PhD in astrophysics, also in Paris. He has been with the Vatican Observatory since 2010, robotizing the Vatican Telescope on Mount Graham and teaching philosophy and history of astronomy at the University of Arizona. He is the Vatican Observatory's vice director for its research group in Tucson since 2012. So let us welcome Paul Gabor. I have three topics for a chat today. First, you may be intrigued by the Vatican Observatory and our work. Second, I grew up behind the Iron Curtain in communist Czechoslovakia. It was every teacher's job to attack faith 
and promote scientific atheism. So we can talk about that. And finally, as a Christian in science or engineering or medicine, you may have problems with other members of your church. They may be leery of science. They may consider science a hostile force set to destroy Christianity. But apart from such extreme cases, you may have run into more subtle problems. Here's an example of what I mean. Take a Bible study class. The topic is the prodigal son. After going through his inheritance, the pastor says, the prodigal son was reduced to feeding the pigs in a far distant land. He was hungry and miserable. But then he recalled that in his father's house, even the servants were better off. He got up and left, returning home to his father. Everybody is duly moved. Everybody except the one engineer in the class. What's the matter? The pastor asks him. So the son just gets up and leaves? Exactly. He turns over a new leaf, he starts a new life, and he never looks back. Yes, I understand that, but what happened after he left? His father was glad to have him back and gave him a warm welcome. Yes, but what happened after the son left? Who took care of the pigs? The pastor resents the engineer for making fun of one of the greatest parables in the Holy Bible. But the engineer was not joking. In the engineer's logical mind, the son's motivations may be fine, but he is still the same selfish and unreliable schmuck who starts his supposedly new life by going AWOL from his job. Perhaps you ran into such communication issues yourself. Maybe you were the engineer in the story. Maybe you were the pastor. In any case, I'd love to meet you. Dr. Deborah Harsma is a frequent speaker on modern science and Christian faith at research universities, churches, and public venues like the National Press Club. She is president of Biologos, invites the church and the world to see the harmony between science and biblical faith. Previously, she served as professor and chair of the Department of Physics and Astronomy at Calvin College. Dr. Harsma is an experienced astronomer with publications in the astrophysical journals on extragalactic astronomy and cosmology. She has studied large galaxies, galaxy clusters, the curvature of space, and the expansion of the universe using telescopes around the world and in orbit. She received her doctorate in astrophysics from MIT. Welcome, Deborah. Hello, everyone. I am an astronomer and in my research, I've studied galaxies, galaxy clusters, and the universe, the curvature of space. Behind me is a poster of one of my favorite galaxy clusters. And each of those yellow blobs that you see is not a star, but an entire galaxy of hundreds of billions of stars. The universe is incredibly vast. And most people, when they encounter this, have a sense of wonder and awe at how amazing the universe is, similar to when you walk outside and look up at the night sky. But for me as a Christian, there's another layer to this, a layer of worship, because the Bible teaches the heavens declare the glory of God. The universe didn't just appear um, or arise from an impersonal force, but rather there is a person behind the universe. Scripture goes on uh, when it is teaching of Jesus Christ to, to name him as the creator of all things. So the person that I know and follow as my Lord and Savior is also the creator of this amazing galaxy cluster. And that always fills me with just amazement and worship. For me, doing science does not mean setting aside my faith. I remember as a graduate student wondering if I should be neutral when I go to sit down and analyze data and somehow be objective and apart from my faith. But then I realized, no, it's the very faithfulness of God that allows me to do scientific research. God's faithful governance of all things across time and space gives that regularity that we study in physics and astronomy. Now, there was a time where I felt a, a tension and a conflict between my faith and my science. I grew up in a wonderful Christian family, um, 
but that did teach that the earth was young and we thought Big Bang was a bad word in opposition to God. But when I looked into this more as an adult and I read uh, biblical scholars, I learned more about what scripture was actually teaching and how God in uh, Genesis was speaking to an ancient culture that believed the earth was flat and they pictured the sky as a solid dome. And God didn't try to correct those misapprehensions and teach them what the world was really like. And instead, God taught them, however you picture the universe, I created each part of it, that God is sovereign over it all, and that he gave humans a special role in the universe. And that's what my takeaway is from Genesis 1 as well. And I would say that science there prompted me to investigate more deeply and come to a richer understanding of scripture. And overall, uh, considering God's word and God's world together, I feel I've come to a deeper faith in Jesus Christ. If you ever have to go to a place you've never gone before, it pays to take along an expert on what you're going to find. If you're headed to Jupiter, then you want to bring along Dr. Jonathan Lenine. As you'll hear in a moment, Professor Lenine is all things Jupiter. In recognition of his many scholarly achievements in astronomy and astrophysics, he was named a member of the U.S. National Academy of Sciences, Sciences the leading organization of prominent scientists in the country. But beyond his knowledge, experience, and expertise in astronomy and planetary sciences, he has a profound faith in Jesus Christ as well. He is vice president of the Society of Catholic Scientists and the faculty advisor to Cornell's chapter of the Thomistic Institute, which seeks to strengthen the intellectual formation of Christians at universities. Please welcome Dr. Lenin. I have taught and done research in astronomy and planetary science for uh, 35 years. My specialty is planets, planets in our solar system, planets around other stars. I've been involved in many NASA and international space missions, the Cassini-Huygens mission, which spent 13 years orbiting Saturn and spent, sent a probe down to the surface of Saturn's largest moon, Titan. I'm involved with the Juno mission, which is currently in polar orbit around the planet behind me, Jupiter revealing the secrets of this solar system's largest planet. I'm involved in the Europa Clipper mission, which will launch in 2024 to uh, determine whether the subterranean ocean under the surface of Europa, one of Jupiter's moons, is habitable, whether it could support life. And I am an interdisciplinary scientist on the James Webb Space Telescope, the next step beyond Hubble and Spitzer, a telescope that will look to the far reaches of the universe, the beginning of time, and also be able to measure the composition of the atmospheres of planets around other stars. I'm also a practicing Catholic. I'm a member of the parish of St. Catherine of Siena here in Ithaca, New York, where I serve on the pastoral council. I'm vice president of the Society of Catholic Scientists. I am the faculty advisor for the Cornell chapter of the Thomistic Institute. I'm a convert to Catholicism. I was born and raised in the Jewish faith. I came to realize that I believed uh, in uh, the incarnation of God, uh, Jesus Christ, God and man, uh, the second person of the Trinity who came to, uh, came to earth for our salvation. I converted to Catholicism in 2007 after a year-long RCIA process. I was inspired by a number of people, the priests and brothers of the Vatican Observatory, uh, the life of uh, Georges Lemaitre, the Catholic priest who is also the father of the uh, Big Bang model of the origin of the cosmos and who made many profound contributions to cosmology. Through these stories and my own reflections, I came to realize that science and faith are not in conflict, but are harmoniously intertwined. And so as a scientist, I study uh, uh, the uh, majesty and beauty of the cosmos. And as a Catholic, I worship the God who created this cosmos and created us. 
Our next speaker is Dr. Jennifer Wiseman, and she is an astrophysicist, author, and speaker. She studies the process of star and planet formation in our galaxy using radio, optical, and infrared telescopes. She's also interested in national science policy and public science engagement. She served as a congressional science fellow for the American Physical Society and directs the program of Dialogue on Science, Ethics, and Religion for the American Association for the Advancement of Science. Dr. Wiseman studied physics at MIT, co-discovering Comet Wiseman's GIF in 1987 and continued in astronomy with her doctoral research at Harvard. She has worked with several international observatories and is currently a senior astrophysicist at the Goddard Space Flight Center. Dr. Wiseman is a fellow of the American Scientific Affiliation, a network of Christians in science. She frequently gives public talks on the excitement of scientific discovery. She grew up on an Arkansas farm enjoying late night stargazing walks with her parents and pets. Let's welcome Jennifer Wiseman. I'm amazed by the incredible universe we live in. I grew up in a rural area on a farm and at night we would go walking, uh, my parents, myself, our pets, and just enjoy the natural world all around us, including forests and trees and meadows and streams wildlife, and yes, the stars above in the dark night sky. I grew up understanding that the natural world is part of God's creation and we should rejoice in it. And I think that led to my own comfort and interest in science. Years later now, I've learned and realized that through development of technology over the last few decades, like sophisticated telescopes and probes, we have found that we live in a galaxy that's just teeming with stars. And most of those stars have their own planetary systems. Our own solar system, in fact, is very dynamic. It includes planets with changing weather and moons that support water oceans under icy crusts. As a child, I was always curious. I wanted to go to those exotic worlds and see what they were like. We now know that other star systems are actively forming. That became my research uh, focus in graduate school. And beyond our Milky Way galaxy, we now know that hundreds of billions of other galaxies fill the observable universe and unseen dark matter and dark energy are driving the dynamics of it all. I believe curiosity about this natural world we live in is a basic human quality that rightly used can honor God. So for me, science is a great gift. It allows us to learn more about the natural world and our faith gives us assurance of purpose and hope. So we can use this knowledge to help others. We can use science both to uplift the thoughts of those we touch toward this bigger picture of the universe we inhabit and we can use it to engage many, both in our scientific settings and in the broader world, to see, love, and respect that natural world we are a part of, using our knowledge to help people and all creatures around the globe. 